Hey everyone, in this video we're talking about some radical rules. When I say radical, I just mean the sign that looks like that. The square root sign or cubed root, whatever, looks like that, sort of. The first rule we have is that if we have any root of something, let's do, yeah, let's do y, and under the um, root sign is a fraction that's equivalent to the n root of the top over the n root of the thing on the bottom. You can split it up, use the same number out here as the outside numbers when you split it up into a fraction. So for example, the square root of 1 over 8 would be the square root. You don't have to keep the 2's for square root. And um, if you don't see any number written out there, just assume it's a 2. That would be the square root of 1 over the square root of 8. And you could figure out what that is. It's just going to be some decimal number. If you had something like the, let's say the fourth root of 1 over 64, that would be the fourth root of 1 over the fourth root of 64, and you could figure out what that's equal to. Let's do one more example. Get rid of this one, I think. Let's do the fifth root of 1 over 32. That's equivalent to the fifth root of 1 over the fifth root of 32. What number do you multiply by itself five times to equal 1? Well, that would be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So the fifth root of 1 would be 1. And the fifth root of 32, you can, you know, try to use the nth root button on your calculator. But I would type that into my calculator as 32, and then do the little exponent symbol, and then in brackets, 1 divided by 5. Because 32 to the exponent of 1 over 5 is equivalent to the fifth root of 32. And when you do that on your calculator, you should get 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 multiplied by itself 5 times, is equal to 32. So the fifth root of 1 over 32 was actually just a half. Sometimes, let's do another example of a different question. Sometimes you might have to use a different rule than that. But it's okay. Um, just a little note for you. If you have, let's say, the cubed root of some number c cubed, that's always just equal to whatever the number is down there. And I can prove it to you because that would be the same. Over here is the same as c cubed to the exponent of cubed root is the same as the exponent of 1 over 3. When we have something to an exponent, to an exponent we multiply the exponent. So that would be c to the power of 3 is equivalent to 3 over 1 times 1 over 3. To multiply exponents, you multiply the tops together. 3 times 1 is 3. You multiply the bottoms together. 1 times 3 is also 3. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. And c to the power of 1 is equal to c. Let's do an example sort of similar. We're going to use the cubed root little symbol again. We're going to do the cubed root of something negative. And you can never take the square root of a negative number. Those are defined as imaginary numbers. But the cubed root of a negative number, you can definitely do that. The easiest example would be the cubed root of negative 1. Is it negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 equal to negative 1? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 equals negative 1. So the cubed root of negative numbers is totally fine. In fact, the number out here just needs to be an odd number. You could do the fifth root of a negative number, the seventh root of a negative number. You could not do the sixth root of a negative number because 6 is not an odd number. So we're totally okay over here. The cubed root of negative 64, and we need to think it's some number multiplied three times. So 
that equals negative 64. And you can do this on your calculator the way I would input it to my calculator. If I would go negative 64 to the exponent of, in brackets, 1 divided by 3. So I'll show you that. I'll go in brackets negative 64 to the exponent of. It's really important to put your exponent in brackets. 1 divided by 3 has to be in brackets, and when I do that, I get negative 4. You can check and see if that's right. So negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, I get negative 64. So if I filled in all these brackets up here with negative 4, they would all multiply to negative 64, which means the cube root of negative 64 is equal to negative 4. Let's do another example of a mixed radical. You will see things that look like this. 2 times the cube root of 216. What that means is 2 times whatever the cube root of 216 is. So I'll just go on my calculator 216 to the exponent of 1 divided by 3 to get the cube root and I get that's equal to 6, so 2 times 6 is equal to 12, so 2, the cubed root of 216, was also equal to 12. Got one more example, which is a half times the cubed root of 80. So this would be equivalent to a half times the cubed root of 80. So I'll go 80 to the exponent of, in brackets, 1 divided by 3 on my calculator, and I'll get that's equal to about 4.3 times 1 half. I get it's approximately equal to 2.15.